Conference Office moderating today's call. Uh, before we begin, we'll do our usual announcements. Always as a reminder, uh, please keep your lines uh, either muted or your background noise to a minimum so we can clearly hear our coaches and our uh, panelists asking questions throughout the duration of the call. Uh, to answer or to ask a question at any time, those media members can press star 1 on your phone or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser and click raise hand. At any time our coaches are speaking to enter our question queue, we will take your questions in the order they appear. We'll also make one last call if we are unable to see your uh, try to answer the queue to, uh, to ask questions. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and begin. First, our announcements. Our players of the week from week three, the Choice Hotel's Offensive Player of the Week was Liberty quarterback Josh Woodrum. The Defensive Player of the Week was Monmouth defensive lineman Demetrius Smith. The Special Teams Player of the Week, and also named the Stats National Special Teams Player of the Week yesterday afternoon, Coastal Carolina kick returner Devin Brown. And the Crons brand Freshman of the Week was Monmouth quarterback Cody Williams. Other notes to pass along before we hear from our coaches. This past week, the Big South posted its first ever 7-0 week uh, in non-conference play. Last year in week three, the conference went 6-0. So congratulations to all our teams and their victories this past week with that 7-0 mark. The Big South now has two teams ranked in the top ten national polls. That is the first time in league history we've had two teams in the top ten at the same time. Kennesaw State is the first member to start 3-0 in, the first, in their first season in the Big South of any newcomers. With Liberty's victory over Montana, the Big South is now 10-10 and all-time when a ranked Big South team plays a ranked non-conference foe. The Flames, uh, Chima Uzawehi, became the Big South's all-time sack leader. He had two sacks against Montana to move his career total to 22.5. Kennesaw State is the first team in league history with a defensive touchdown in the first three games of the season. Coastal Carolina's D'Angelo Henderson, he is pacing ahead of the Big South single season rushing record and has scored a touchdown in 17 consecutive games, one away from tying the league record. Monmouth's LeVon Chaney is the first running back in Big South history with three career touchdown passes. And Liberty's Josh Woodrum moved into second all-time in league history for career passing yards as he did that this past Saturday against Montana. We'll now move to our coaches as we review uh, this past week's uh, success, 7 other success, and talk about week four and all the opponents we have uh, coming up. And our first coach, as always, is the head coach of the Gardner-Webb Running Bulldogs, Carol McCray. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Mark. How you doing? We're doing fine. Congratulations to you all for picking up your first win of the season, 13-9 over Virginia Union. If you can open up talk about that game, uh, then we'll start taking questions and talking about Saturday's opponent. Okay, certainly will. Well, uh, first of all, congratulations to all the Big South teams. Certainly we're excited about uh, everybody winning last week, and we were uh, happy to be a part of that. Uh, <clears throat> we had a tough ball game here at Spangler Stadium uh, with uh, another defensive effort where our defense really had to step up and stand up you know, quite a few times inside the 20 and held uh, Virginia Union off to uh, <clears throat> win a ball game uh, late. Uh, you know, we didn't have uh, Tyrell Maxwell didn't play this week, so we had two new quarterbacks we played in the ball game offensively and, you know, kept things pretty close to the vest on as far as what we could or could not do. And uh, so certainly we got to, you know, get some things worked out and get these young guys going as we uh, continue to represent the Big South Conference this week against uh, Wofford in the Southern Conference. And uh, so plenty of work still to do. Had a lot of guys that uh, played really, really well. Our older guys, we still got some young guys that the learning curve has got to close quickly as we uh, head into uh, league, uh, head into league play in a couple of weeks, but head into the Wofford game this week. All right, Coach, thanks very much. At this time, we'll start taking questions for Garden Web Head Coach Carol McCray. Again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone at any time, or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser. Click raise hand if you joined us via the web. Coach, while we wait for some questions to come in, talk a little bit more about the Terriers. Uh, okay. uh, you're two and zero against them. Uh, great rivalry, obviously, with the proximity between the schools. And just right. What you've seen so far in the season? 
Well, they're always a solid team. You know, they've uh, they played two two Division One teams and uh, on the road, and then uh, played Tennessee Tech at home. Beat them two weeks ago. Uh, played Clemson the first week. <clears throat> you know, close by, but uh, really most impressive against Tennessee Tech. And to be honest with you, I mean, they they had as good a chance as Idaho to win the game this past week. I felt like they probably would beat Idaho out there, and uh, it proved to be true. Um, and they had a couple things happen to them, but they really played well. And I think uh, Coach Ayers has this team playing very well. So junior, senior team, and I think that uh, they'll certainly uh, give us all we can stand as we head down to their place. But uh, you've done a fine job down there. Anytime you've been somewhere 28 years and won almost 200 ball games, I mean, certainly I've, I've known Mike a long time. He does a great job of that wing bone offense, and then they're very sound and. It's a, it's a real fundamental football team. They represent their coaching staff very well every time the ball is snapped. All right, we're taking questions for Cardinal Web head coach Carol McCray. Again, star one on your phone at any time. Or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser and click raise hand if you join us via the web. And coach, first question for you is from Damian Sordelet of the Lynchburg News in Advance. Okay. Carol, good morning. How are you? Fine, Damian. How are you? I'm doing well. I um, wanted to Check in on Tyrell, how he's doing, and what did you see out of Brody and Chase in the game against Virginia and Brody uh, getting the most carries um, for you guys and seemed like trying to get those two guys going? Well, Tyrell, is uh, he's still on protocol, uh, you know, for a concussion that uh, happened in the Elon game. He's, he is progressing very well, and he will be able to start uh, some contact with him today. So that's good to, you know, he's day by day, whether – is to be determined this week. Uh, you know, Chase came in and then uh, got the start for us on Saturday, started the ball game off, and uh, then we played Brody right afterwards. Uh, whoever got got us going to who we're going to go with, but, uh, you know, Brody's a guy that, uh, you know, can really run and uh, helps us in the run game. We did not throw the ball very much, but uh, probably they both proved that, uh, you know, they're capable. We just have to be a little more limited in what we do package by package uh, with those guys. Yeah, if we had to start today, I guess Bodie would take the first snaps and we would probably still play them both. And we'll know more about Tyrell by the time we get to Thursday of this week. And at, for an offense, is that um, what does this do to get you guys going as you prepare for – you know, your last regular season game, or last non-conference game, I should say, against a very good Wofford team and getting to the Big South play. Does the injury come at a bad time for Tyrell, or is it good to get these young quarterbacks some game action against the Division II team so that way they can get their feet wet in game situations, and that way you have them ready to go when you do get to a good Wofford team from the SoCon and then get into Big South play? Well, I think getting experience is always a plus, and uh... – we were able to pull the ball game out with those two guys playing, and we were able to keep Tyrell on the sideline. So I think down the road, hopefully, it'll be a plus for us if they both have to play this week. I guess we'll see how much that experience has paid off. But uh, like any coach, you know, Tyrell's the starter for a reason. You know, he's our best opportunity to win a game. So we hope to get him back as soon as possible, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to play against Wofford so that we can represent the Big South Conference best we can. What did you see, um, if, you're, if you've been able to watch some game film, from what Wofford did well against Idaho, especially on the road, you know, taking them down to the wire, and what you feel your team could do well to, you know, get a get a quality win against a good SoCon team under your belt before you get into the gauntlet of the Big South? Well, you got to be ready for the game. I mean, they took the physicality to Idaho, I thought. They ran the football as they always do. They still only threw it maybe six times. So uh, Wofford doesn't change for anybody. And uh, I thought they matched up well with uh, the Idaho team. I think the other thing you see is defensively, as always, they're very similar to us in the odd front. Uh, they're very, very sound, fundamental. You know, uh, Mike he always does what to do. And uh, very assignment-oriented, very good at executing play calls one at a time. And, uh I think it'll be a real physical football game down at their place, and I think they'll, you know, see if we can slow them down defensively. Certainly, I hope we can, and and it'll be a challenge for us, uh, regardless of our quarterback. Uh, we we need to improve to uh, 
show that we can move the ball offensively, try to win a game, put enough points on the board. We can't rely on our defense staying on the field, and it certainly be a detriment if our defense has to stay on the field a whole lot this week. As usual, uh, the uh, times you get the football will be limited. Uh, they do a good job of keeping the football. I think the first time they had it against Tennessee Tech, Mike had it on his own 30, fourth and four, and he went for it. So, you know, they're going to play a four-down game, not a three-down game, and, and you got to be ready to play all four downs on defense. So got to keep going. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate it. Okay, Damon. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. And, Coach, uh, I'll wrap up with one uh, one quick question. Just uh, t- a lot of young guys that you're playing, a lot of newcomers, just how their progress has been from uh, the first three weeks of the season. Well, we've seen flashes of progress by all of them. And we actually played more last week than we played the first two weeks. So we're going to keep pushing those guys forward and seeing if we can season them a little bit better. They'll certainly have a great experience this week uh, getting to play against a fine football team. And then we head into which we'll concentrate specifically with these young guys and trying to get some guys healthy and get them back so that we can be a little more full force as we head into conference play. So we've seen progress by all of them. We're playing in a lot of different spots, some more than others, mostly on offense. And uh, I've seen them all improve, but we certainly have some technical things to work on, and we certainly got them here quickly as we head into this season. All right, Coach, I'm not seeing any more questions, so we'll let you go. Thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck Saturday against Wofford. Thanks, Mark, and uh, good luck to all the Big South teams this week. Have a good week. All right. Thanks, Coach.